place is like a nightmare. Like a real friggin' nightmare. Oh my god, the smell! Holy shit! What's our tech employee? Report. Hi! Well, hey guys, what's up? Have you arrived at Count Saberwolf's alchemical lab? Yeah, uh... I think so, but... Holy hell, guys, this place is nuts! Like... Are those arms? Are those real freaking arms? Your performance is under evaluation. Any more strikes against your record will result in immediate termination. You must create a lycanthropy potion before dawn. Lycanthro what? Dudes, once again, I play video games. Last I checked, alchemy wasn't anywhere on my resume. Equip yourself with the appropriate attire for these experiments, and then report back immediately. Over and out. You gotta be kidding me. You you can't expect me to win. Do it! I swear this is the worst job ever. While I deal with this, you guys can learn a lot about the advanced strategies of Killer Instinct. And until we come back, God, who the hell would wear this? Now I will warn everyone. From this point forward, the tutorial is going to take a turn for the much more advanced. If you have not checked out the previous episode and the basic mechanics of Killer Instinct, please do so by clicking the link in the description below. But for now, let's get started. Ultra Combos Perhaps the most iconic staple of Killer Instinct, Ultra Combos are back and even more useful than before. To activate an Ultra Combo, you need to first get your opponent's health bar to their final round, that's two health bars in, and get it down to about 15%. Their life meter will then reach Danger, and you can execute an Ultra at any point once it says Danger. And to activate the Ultra, it's literally just an Ender. Each character is going to have a unique input for their Ultra Combo, and if you do so within that Danger portion of the health bar, the Ultra will activate, giving you a huge cinematic musical combo. But you have to be sure that you have an opener at the beginning of hitting your opponent because this does act as an ender. As long as you do an opener to the Ultra, it'll activate within that 15% health. But let's say you want even more to your Ultra. You want to cement your post-match victory. Well, you can do so with a double Ultra by using what's called an Instinct Cancel. Instinct Cancelling is one of the first real advanced strategies. In order to Instinct Cancel, you need to be able to activate your character's instinct. This means you'll either need to take damage or dish out combo breakers, as we explained in the first episode. After you get many hits into your Ultra, and if they're not being juggled, press the Heavy Punch and Heavy Kick button to activate your instinct. You'll notice that the knockdown value meter now completely resets, which enables you to restart your combo. You can add a few hits here and there, refill the KV meter, or activate a second Ultra right off the bat. But remember, you need to do an opener to activate the Ultra because it does act as an ender. But let's say you don't want to watch this huge drawn out Ultra combo every time. Well, you could be a nice guy and do what's called an Ultra Ender. At any point during an Ultra combo, press the medium punch and medium kick button for a single giant hit that ends the entire match. But what are these green bars underneath your combo gauge? This is what's called Ender Levels. Each Ender has four different levels as represented by these bars. To fill the bars and to get more hits out of your Ender, you need to have longer, more damaging combos or add shadow moves in the middle of those combos. Of course, the level four can take a while to get to, looks amazing and dishes out the most damage, but it gives your opponent a lot of instinct gauge, so you sometimes need to be careful how long your combos are. The functionality of Enders can also be quite different per character. Outside of having a level 1, 2, 3, or 4, each one serves a specific purpose. Jago's a perfect example as he has all four different types of Enders. The Shoryuken is Jago's Damage Ender. This will actually dish out the maximum allowed damage between any of his Enders. Use this one if your purpose is just to get their health bar down. Jago's Fireball is a Battery Ender. If you use this one, it won't do nearly as much damage as the Shoryuken. However, the Fireball Ender will give Jago meter depending on the level of its usage. Jago's Heavy Laser Sword is also his Launcher Ender. 
This will send your opponent flying into the sky for a juggle opportunity, and depending on the level of Ender, can send them even higher if pushed further. Juggle Enders are amazing for short combos, as they allow you to get extra damage after the Ender has happened, unlike a Damage Ender which will hit just one time early on. Last but not least is Jago's Heavy Wind Kick, which is a Wall Splat Ender. This sends the opponent flying backwards, and if they're close to the edge of the screen, they will splat into the wall. This is great because it allows an opportunity for you to set your opponent up as they're recovering from the wall splat. Although not as damaging as some of the other enders, wall splats are great for setting up your opponent and causing confusion. Breaking Enders You heard that right, enders are actually breakable in some situations. If you ever see your opponent try to perform an opener right to an ender, it's actually breakable. Press heavy punch and heavy kick during the ender animation and you'll break the entire combo. But if this keeps happening to you, make sure you press a button after your opener leading to the ender. This will act as an auto double and if your combo has any auto doubles in it, it prevents the opponent from breaking the ender. Shadow Breakers If used as a linker, shadow moves can also be broken. All shadow moves in Killer Instinct are composed of five hits, but the speed and timing of shadow moves will vary for every character. To break shadow moves, you press medium punch and medium kick as each of the hits land. If you successfully connect with three of the five hits in a shadow move, you'll break the combo. Now this doesn't have to be the first three, the second three, or even the final three hits in that five hit shadow move. Any three can be struck to break the combo, but due to the different rhythm of shadow moves, only some are easily breakable. For example, Saberwolf's Leaping Slash shadow move happens so fast that you literally can mash medium punch and medium kick to successfully hit three times. This same timing also applies to Thunder's Ankle Slicer shadow linker and Glacius's Cold Shoulder shadow linker. However, some other Shadow Linkers have extremely awkward timing. Express caution when trying to break Shadow Linkers, as any failed attempt will lead to a full lockout. You can easily practice breaking Shadow Linkers in training mode. But since the announcer makes it extremely obvious that you're attempting to break a Shadow move by announcing 1, 2, and 3 on each hit, sometimes you might not want to break that Shadow move for a very good reason. All Protect Employee it's been three hours since your past communication. Risk termination by full gore mark two if you do All not- All right, I get it guys, but I think I might be onto something here. This is it. The blood of Benny, it's plus 40 on block and has 10 active frames. Now what did you want me to do with this? Max, there you are. You must so worry. Dude, holy crap, you gotta get me out of here. There's this crazy, huge, evil corporate empire and they're trying to take over the yeah, world. Yeah, that's cool, man. You didn't buy any yogurt before you left. Doom is dying here. Now find the subject to hard. test the sample on. I know, I'll take care wait, of it. What though. smells like bananas and sex? Give me that. Oh, wait, no. Respond. Respond. I think I might have found a test subject. Yeah. How do you feel? Fine. Other than a desire to chase squirrels and rub my ass on the floor, I feel totally fine. No? No! Employee are in danger of final point against your permanent record. Report results immediately. I know, I know. Dude, where the hell did you go? Oh my god. Doom? Help me! You look just like my pet dog. How convenient. <laughs> Counter Breakers. One of the most exciting aspects of Killer Instinct, Counter Breakers prevent your opponent from breaking your combo. And to use a Counter Breaker, you need to already be in a combo. You can press medium punch and medium kick at any point during the combo to enter a counter breaker stance. This brief window of opportunity will literally allow your character to eat combo breakers. If at any point after you press medium punch and medium kick and your opponent chooses to do a combo breaker, 
The entire combo resets, the knockdown value is returned to zero, and they'll be locked out for a full four seconds. This can make the damage output of some combos absolutely insane, sometimes reaching up to 60 to 80% after a successful counterbreaker, but it's extremely risky. In order to get a counterbreaker to work, your opponent needs to be pressing combo breakers. But if they choose not to press a combo breaker and you go through with your counterbreaker, you're left completely vulnerable for a period of time. Counterbreakers are also even more risky because you're sacrificing your ender damage in order to get more damage out of your combo. It's literally the greatest example of risk reward. However, there are setups in Killer Instinct that can leave you a very high chance of landing a counterbreaker. Heavy Auto Doubles. Over time, and as we mentioned in the first episode, heavy auto doubles are very slow. After playing Killer Instinct for some time now, you should be able to recognize what heavy auto doubles look like and then break them on reaction. But if your opponent knows this, they're going to purposely put a heavy auto double into the combo as bait for you breaking that combo. At this point, you'll see the first hit of the heavy auto double go through, but then comes the counter breaker. They knew you could react to heavy doubles and used it against you. And sometimes the best way to fight this strategy is just not to combo break. It's all a part of the mind games of Killer Instinct. Fast hitting shadow moves are also easily breakable in Killer Instinct. As with the three characters we just mentioned and their multi hitting shadows that can be broken by rapidly pressing medium punch and medium kick, since these are easily breakable, if you know your opponent can do so, use it against them by counterbreakering mid shadow move. Since they rapidly press the buttons, one of them will hit the counterbreaker and allow you to continue for a full damaging combo. And most counterbreakers do happen during shadow moves in Killer Instinct. Since the announcer is making it very obvious that they're trying to break, you can input the counterbreaker on any one of the hits. Shadow counters. If you find yourself blocking a lot against certain opponents and constantly under a wave of pressure, shadow counters are for you. Shadow counters can only be used while you're blocking and cost one bar of meter. To activate a shadow counter, make sure you are blocking and press medium punch and medium kick. Your character enters a state similar to a counter breaker, but this time you can absorb any attack and retaliate automatically with a shadow move. This might seem like easy damage, but it has to be used carefully. One of the greatest examples and most effective uses of shadow counters is when you're blocking shadow moves. Here is a couple of examples where you might want to use a shadow counter. Jago's Forward Roundhouse. Orchid's Flick Flack. Saberwolf's Chain Combos or his Ragged Edge. And Thunder's Triple Axe. Land any one of these shadow counters and you could drastically change the pace of a match. And finally, the most requested advanced strategy in Killer Instinct, manual combos. If your combos are getting broken left and right and don't want to risk something like a counter breaker, then manual combos are for you. The best way to think of a manual hit is actually a single hit auto double. For auto doubles, you press the attack at any point after an opener or a linker and you're going to get two hits automatically. But there is a way to make this a one hit manual and requires extremely sensitive timing. And to get a brief understanding of how that timing works, go into dojo mode and select lesson 19. Manuals work very similar to something called links in Street Fighter games. Although in Killer Instinct, there is no input shortcuts to make this easier. You literally have to hit it on very few frame commands. Since they replace doubles, most manuals are going to come after linkers. But not all linkers are the same. Some are much easier to follow up with manuals than others. So here is a few examples to make your life doing manuals even easier. Jago's Light Laser Sword or Heavy Wind Kick Linker. Saberwolf's Heavy Ragged Edge or Heavy Hamstring Linker. Glacius's Medium or Heavy Shatter. Sadira's Heavy Blade Demon or Heavy Recluse. Thunder's Medium or Heavy Ankle Slicer. And Orchid's Heavy Flick Flack. If you don't have an understanding of how frame data works, 
These moves leave you in high positive frames. Essentially what it means, it'll be easier to connect some of your normal attacks after you use these specific linkers. But like the rest of Killer Instinct, manuals come with a trade-off. Auto doubles are much easier to perform, however they're easier to break, but they do more damage, while manuals are much more difficult to perform, much more difficult to break, but do half as much damage as auto doubles because it's only a single hit. It all falls in line with the philosophy of Killer Instinct, heavy mind games and high risk to high reward. Oh my god, I can't believe that I turned everyone's favorite freaking Marvel character into a dog! Oh god, they're gonna kill me. If Doom's a dog, then that means he has like no responsibilities. This may not be such a bad thing after all. No, there's, there's gotta be something in here we can use to fix you. I mean, look at all this stuff. Let's do it. are you there? Congratulations! Your lycanthropy potion has earned you the highest honor of journeyman at Ultratech. Wow, uh. Thanks! You will return to headquarters, have your own office, promotion, and a reward of over $500,000. Dispose of the subject, a chopper is on the way. Dispose? Wait, 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 what do you mean? There's an incinerator in the lab. Dispose of it! Oh god lord in heaven, no mercy, Ultra Combo, I don't wanna die! Don't worry about it, dude. Nobody's dying today. You know what, guys? You can go to hell. Keep your money, keep your big fancy office, because I quit. You don't want to do this! Do not hang up this- Sorry you didn't get all that money, Max. No, oh, don't worry about it. Let's just call a taxi and go home. Then I'll find a way to turn you back into an evil, foot-diving, tyrannical magician. Wait, Max! Yeah. Whoa. What is it? Doom only has one concern. Wins Marvel! I'm leaving you here. Wait, 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 wait! Uh, I was just kidding! <laughs>